Estimation is just a fancy word for guessing. We're usually guessing about the problem that we need to solve, how we'll solve it, how long it will take, and so how much it will cost. Oh, and if we're really advanced, we may try guessing about how much money we will make from the idea too. So what is the point of an estimate really? And why are they always wrong? Oh, and while we're exploring those ideas, how can we do a better job of choosing what to work on next? Hi, I'm Dave Farley, welcome to my channel. And if you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. We can estimate all sorts of things, but they are by their nature, always just predictions of the future. And so just guesses and all are deeply prone to error. We can't really know how much money our killer idea will make or how long it will take us to build the software that's new in some way. If your aim is to create great software products, this is always an incremental progression. Great product ideas in reality don't spring fully formed from the mind of some genius. They evolve over time in a series of steps and get better and better until they are great. This stuff is really difficult to predict. Mostly in software, when we discuss estimates, what we're really talking about is estimates that help us to decide whether or not we should do something. Is this project or feature worth all of the effort? Fundamentally, the question that we are attempting to answer is, what should we work on next? So if that's the case, how do you figure out what to work on next? The traditional response is often probably based on Hippo, the highest paid person's opinion. But Hippos really make good products. What we'd really like to find is the most value for the least work. So how do we pick those easy, high value things? I have a simple tool that I've been using and recommending for some years now that I think really helps us to focus on this question. Sometimes though, the wins don't always come from where you expect. I had a long-term client, a big company doing complicated things. I'd been working with them for a couple of years and one of the people that I was enjoying working with quite a lot was their lead product owner. He was a big lean thinking proponent within the firm, but was struggling to help the product owners that worked for him to establish a leaner approach to product ownership. They were struggling with big, over complex estimations, the feeling of the need for certainty, not feeling confident to make a choice unless they had detailed plans in place with estimations for the work and the cost of the work, as well as detailed market research and guesses about the value of the features being discussed. We were discussing all this and how much work was involved and how to do better when I remembered something that I had learnt from my friend Jeff Patton, a kind of informal qualitative planning tool that works really nicely to visualise the planning problem. My friend, the product owner, loved this. Subsequently, its adoption made a huge difference in improving the planning process for his organisation and helped the product owners to focus better and more easily on the features that really mattered to people and so ultimately delivered better value to their customers. This approach helped them to prioritise things much more easily and with much less work. By now, I'm imagining you imagining some big complex tool, but that's not it. It is really simple, simple enough in fact, that you can remember all of the details that you need to know to be able to use it next time you're doing some planning. Let me pause there to thank our sponsors. We are fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Tricentis and Transfic. All of these companies offer products and services that are well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, click on the links in the description below to both support our sponsors and for you to maybe learn some things that might be interesting to you. Mostly, as a species, we are rubbish at predicting the future. So planning is always difficult and plans are always wrong. 
though the good ones can also be useful. So we need some tools to help us to do a better job than simply just guessing, some kind of structured guessing maybe. What is generally regarded as the gold standard for rational planning is probably something a bit more complicated than the thing that I'm going to end up recommending in this video. It's called CD3, cost of delay divided by duration. Fundamentally, to make rational planning decisions in software, we need to make some kind of cost-benefit calculation and do a trade-off. How do we maximize the benefit to us for the minimal costs? There are lots of organizations that don't work this way. These are really cargo cult kind of organizations. They, on they only see the costs and so always organize their work to minimize them. That's certainly part of what we need to do, but these organizations will often do rather silly things like delaying work on valuable ideas because the plan says that they should be working on some lower value thing right now. That's because the benefit wasn't included in the prioritization decision, only the cost. This is stupid, however low the cost. The next step up from this is to estimate the business value for each new feature and prioritize work to ensure that we always focus on the most valuable things. Most organizations don't do a great job of this, partly because this is a very difficult thing to do well. How do you work out how valuable an idea will be if you haven't even tried it yet? At this point, the common mistake is to assign the failure of this approach to bad planning uh, and blame it on inaccuracy of, in the estimates of either the cost or the benefit or both. The most common response to this that I've seen is to up the level of planning effort with the assumption that this will improve the plan by increasing the precision of the estimates for both costs and benefits. But this is wrong in two ways. This is mistaking accuracy for precision. Accurate estimates would be nice but can easily also be vague, so vague to be useless. It's accurate to say that we will deliver in 10 years, but not very helpful. Precise estimates are completely irrelevant beyond a fairly crude level. It's precise to say we will deliver on Tuesday at 2.30, but irrelevant. Someone recently told me that their boss insisted on estimates to the nearest quarter of an hour. What a crazy waste of time, money and development effort that is. In science, this problem is solved by defining what they call error bars for any measurement. We should understand the degree of uncertainty involved in the measurement or estimate. And there is no point measuring or estimating things more precisely than that. In software estimation, the error bars are huge. At the start of a project, research says that it's out by a factor of four. Four times your estimate which actually calls much estimation into question altogether, hence the no estimates movement. So working to increase precision is completely the wrong thing to aim for. Another problem is how do we estimate the value of a feature? Traditional measures of value don't usually factor the costs in at all. Most development organizations can't even tell you if a project paid for itself even after the project has finished, let alone before it starts. The mathematical model is simply wrong, however accurate or precise the estimates, because we're missing a whole important dimension in guessing the value, time. Which feature should we build first? This one that will cost three weeks, but will ultimately have a business value of two million, or this one that will take five days and ultimately have a business value of 100,000. Well, obviously, two million is better than 100,000. So option one is better, right? Well, that depends on what ultimately a value means in those statements. If ultimately for option one means 10 years and ultimately for option two means one month, then after one year, option one is worth 200,000 and option two is worth 1.2 million. Another kind of problem with all of this is what about option three that will take five days but has zero value for customers? Obviously, this is a no brainer. We don't want to do this one, except what if this is a regulatory change? And 
as is sometimes possible with such changes, what if there's a fine every week that this change isn't in place? How do we calculate the value of that feature to prioritise stuff? We're missing several important things here, and those things are what CD3 helps to solve. Instead of asking, what is this feature worth? The much better question is, how much does it cost us not to have this feature per unit of time? Now we can see the real costs of going more slowly. If you'd like to understand this better, there's a link to a more detailed explanation of CD3 in the description to this video. The problem with CD3, though, is that once again, it still relies on us coming up with a guess for that cost of delay. And it's easy for us to fall into the trap of being over accurate and over precise in our guesses. Great if you can calculate this, not much help if you can't do that very well. As I said, predicting the future is difficult. At heart, I'm a pragmatist. And so, in general, I like simple solutions to things. So let's look at this simpler, more pragmatic alternative. It starts by asking yourself two questions about each feature that you think you'd like to deliver. First, how much do you think your users would value this feature? Do you think that they would think it was worth a beer, their monthly salary, a holiday, their car or their house? And then ask yourself how much is it going to cost to build it? Will it cost a beer, a monthly salary, a holiday, my car or my house? The things down here are obviously a complete no-brainer. Of course we want to work on things that users think are worth their house, but that will only cost us a beer to produce. So we always pick these things to do first. Things down here are stupid. Why on earth would we spend a house worth of effort to produce something that's only worth a beer to our users? So we're definitely not going to do these things at all. Everything in the middle we don't understand well enough yet to decide what to do with them. So our next step then is to figure out how we could learn more to help us to make a choice. Maybe this could be some kind of experiment in production to refine our view of the value our users will place on the idea. Maybe an A-B test of some different variations of the idea to help us think about it from different angles. A simpler version of this feature that makes it a lot easier to make, perhaps. None of this stuff needs or should be very precise. It's all qualitative and approximate. But qualitative and approximate is where error bars are for software estimation. So another thing that helps is working in small steps. Even without deep accuracy and irrelevant precision, this modeler helps us to focus our minds on the things that really matter and to stop us wasting time and effort on things that don't. So I really like this simple, slightly silly, but extremely useful tool for planning. One more thing before I go. I've been describing this as Jeff Patton's model for years now. I was recently having a beer with Jeff and mentioned how much I liked it and how much I'd used it. And I thanked him for, for, for introducing me to the idea. <laughs> at which point he looked at my picture and didn't recognize it as anything he'd ever said. So now I have no idea who I stole this from, but it certainly wasn't my idea and seemingly it wasn't Jeff's either. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Thank you also to our Patreon members. If you enjoy our stuff and you're not already a Patreon supporter, please do consider supporting the channel and our work here by joining our Patreon community. If you do choose to support us at any level, you can get an annual membership at a 15% discount. Thank you and bye-bye.